Indonesia's undersea beauty is amongst the world's best, and one way to enjoy yes. is through diving mm -hmm. or even Definitely. snorkeling. That said, what if we dive while contributing to the ecosystem instead? Mm -hmm. Our guest today is a person who has done just that. He is the person behind Indonesia Beauty Foundation, Raditya Andrian Saputra, who is focusing on marine ecosystem conservation through coral reefs preservation. Good morning, Mas Andre. Thank you very much for joining us in this morning. Hi, morning so sad everyone. that you can join us live in the studio, but yeah. we're so thankful for you to be here. Hello, Mas Andre. Hi. Can you hear me clear? Yes, yes. loud and clear. So, Mas Andre, where are you at yeah. right now? Uh, at the moment, I'm in Lombok. Uh, ah. This is where I'm based, and also IBF is uh, mainly operating in this area. Oh. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, I cannot be there. Uh, and wish I could be in the studio and then share uh, the story live with you guys. Yeah, maybe next time. But we're here to talk about your foundation, Indonesia Beauty Foundation. We want to know, how did you first establish it? So it all started um, in 2020. But the idea uh, came to my mind like way before that. Um, I thought that uh, a lot of NGOs, marine conservation NGOs, uh, was built or founded by a foreigner, which is quite weird because we have a lot of people in Indonesia, right? And then we yes. have a lot of um, uh, the ocean as well, coral reefs. And I thought I have the knowledge, I have the experience, and then why not I make my own? <laughs> So in 2020, when the pandemic just hit and um, I had all the time in the world and the energy and then uh, I said to my friends, uh, I'm going to create this and then we can do something small here in Lombok and then see you from there. Yeah. And then three years later, apparently we, we, we've done some uh, cool stuff and yeah, people start to see us and then we get more collaboration. That's uh, exactly what we are aiming to do, to spread the word. To, to strengthen marine literacy among Indonesian citizens. Right, I mean, especially when you already have the intuition, when you have the passion and drive, you just listen to it and look at where you are right now, Masande. In regards to coral reefs, though, I just want to mention where during the G20 uh, summit last year, Indonesia had also asked uh, with, you know, fellow country and, you know, other countries to, um, you know, avoid additional damage and improve coral health condition in Indonesia and to join us to conduct a coral reef restoration here. How do you foresee that? And you know, again, your movement is on in concerns to the coral reefs and what is actually our main challenges right now in our marine ecosystem? So uh, I would like to start my statement is uh, from, it's never been about planting corals. It's never been about just working in a coral reef because all the ecosystem in uh, tropical coastal areas, they are all interconnected, you know, mm -hmm. um, like the coral reefs, the mangrove, the seagrass. And we cannot just say we are going to save coral reefs without saving the seagrass and the mangrove themselves. And what I've observed in the field, um, obviously now we have a degrading quality of the coral reefs, but what triggered that in the first place is a uh, lack of education, mm -hmm. lack of awareness. And right. then that's where we tap in. And what we want is so majority of Indonesian or like neighboring countries in Southeast Asia, we talk about this and because the problem is not very uh, prominent like on the surface because if you are not diver, you are not snorkeler, you will not see the problem. Right. And that's the biggest problem, to communicate right. this problem to the bigger community. So that, those are the challenges that we yes. are facing, uh, sadly, right. right now. And you're doing this for a really good cause, Mas Andre, and one of your refocused programs is to support the sustainability of marine ecosystem in this restoration dive. Can you tell us about more uh, about your activity? Right. So the restoration dive or the restorative dive is basically if you if you come to the area to Lombok, um, you can sign up for the dive, and then instead of uh, normally if you go scuba diving. I, uh, I don't know if you guys have been uh, yes. what I've been before, but after it, mm -hmm. but all you have. Mm -hmm. um, we go around, right? We go around the reefs, we go around like the object, and then we, we enjoy, take photos. But instead, we add extra activities um, to plant corals, uh, maintain the structures, mm -hmm. cleaning the frames, and all these activities related to coral reef restoration um, work. And so that hopefully, after joining our dive, uh, people can. 
talk about what they've done underwater instead of just swimming around. They've done right. something underwater and then be part of the solution. There's like a more good deeds than this. And I know, how do you really have this somewhat educating the uh, people, especially in the, the locals, especially because maybe they're used to it, right? Like you said, if people that doesn't dive or a scuba diver or doesn't even swim in the ocean, how can they know about the life underwater and whatnot? But the locals probably, uh, you know, where you're at right now, they're used to it and whatnot. So how can you change their mindset now to really take care and restore the coral reefs, uh, coral reefs itself, other than using as a tourism kind of ventures? Um, a lot of uh, local communities in Lombok and Bali, we we rely on coral as a source of income, right? Correct. Through tourism. Yeah. Um, not, but not all of them realize that um, coral is uh, facing this ma major threat mm -hmm. from a lot of things: tourism, mm -hmm. climate change, etc. Yeah. And with us coming here, we sort of uh, trying to fill that gap trying to educate them to education that if you bring customers like snorkelers, if they're not comfortable, they will try to step on corals, right? Mm -hmm. What's going to happen to the corals? They're going to die. And then they will not grow tomorrow. They will grow maybe in a couple of hundred years. Yeah. And um, with simple conversation, like to try to um, make an equation, if you destroy coral reef and then you will not get income in the future. And that's normally what I use to communicate with the local communities because they are not as privileged as us having the formal education mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. marine science, etc. But um, we try to uh, communicate in simple language. Yeah. So we know what you're doing right now. We know where you're at right now. Yeah. And I just want to know what are the biggest challenges right now that you are facing? Uh, this is very interesting. Um, so the biggest challenge in marine conservation in Indonesia especially um, is actually the financial support for mm -hmm. funding because maybe it's not as big as um, poverty, it's not as big as um, building infrastructures. But the, the impact if we don't act today, yeah. it's going to hit us really hard in the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, like a lot of discussion going on all over the world now. Um, 2021 until 2030 is um, a decade on restoration. I think the UN plotted that uh, campaign or agenda because in the next 10 years, it's very important. If we don't um, act now, I think we will have a major problem. And with that said, uh, there's no um, form of sustainable funding coming from um, domestically. A lot of fundings come from the outside and that's why a lot of NGOs come from uh, overseas, and which is unfortunate because us Indonesian, we should act. It's not the other people because it's our water, right? <laughs> exactly. And I must wonder if you know there are you know our viewers right now from the private sector or from government officials. What would you like to say and convey to them right now, and to support and reach out to Indonesia Biro Foundation? Yeah, uh, my suggestion is to go to the ocean, observe it themselves, yourself, and. Um, Try to enjoy first because once you love, once you enjoy uh, the beauty of the coral reefs, and I think you have this small spark in your mind, try to save them. Yeah. With, uh, whatever you can. If you are not living in the island like I am, you can mm, be a smart consumer or smart. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you will do your lives more uh, smartly, yeah. and then you will go to your holiday destination thinking, am I going with the um, eco-conscious operator? Are they destroying coral more than they are right. supporting the coral Right. This kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, Masanda, in just that note, though, um, you know, before we conclude our talk show for today, I think you are the right person. You are the right person for us to ask. Mm -hmm. When we go diving, again, if this is for uh, you know tourism uh, reasons and whatnot, we're traveling. We want to go diving. We see these beautiful corals. What should we do and what should we not do so then we can preserve yeah, uh, these corals? We can be smart divers yes. and protect the coral reefs at the same time mm -hmm. and while enjoying the beautiful sea yes. in Indonesia. Do and don'ts. <laughs> Very interesting. So what I would suggest to a lot of people uh, underwater, take nothing but pictures, mm -hmm. leave nothing but footprints. Okay. So don't take anything, don't try to touch anything, just try to take pictures and then share it with your colleagues, with your family. 
And I come from a family that is scared of the ocean. They, I, I don't know if my mom or dad can swim even. <laughs> so yeah. I normally send them pictures of a nice coral reef and then they start to ask what sort of fish is that? Right. And that triggers the conversation among us. And then the don't is not to uh, touch things basically. That's the opposite because if you starting to touch a lot of things and then you break things and then they might not grow again within our lifetime, sadly. Right, I mean, you know, it's human nature when humans see something that's beautiful, we tend to like to touch it. Exactly. But you don't know the impact when you do yeah. that, right? Because yeah. you never, it seems like coral reefs are not living thing. Like you yeah. see that's just like a rock and you want to touch it because it's beautiful colors, but you don't know and understand the deep impact if you, you know, you know, break it. Yeah. And you're just ruining it. People right. have this curiosity yeah. and yeah. to let you touch things. So. Yeah. Well, that was Mas Raditya Andrea Saputa. Thank you very much, Mas you, Andrea. It, it was uh, a really a great pleasure to speak with you and have a discussion with you. Uh, you know, it is an Thank honor you. for Ralphie and myself. Uh, hopefully, we're going to have a second session with you with the Indonesia Beauty Foundation right here in the studio with you, yep. Mas we'll Andrea, for, you for here, our next Andrea. session. Go do your thing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much, Mas Andrea. Thank you very much, you have a great one. You, you too. Bye. Bye. Oh my gosh, I can feel a lot of positivity in him. And then exactly. he's just done this for like three years. I now. forgot to ask him his background. <laughs> I was like, we forgot, right? We forgot. He was just so passionate. Yeah. And he's so he has this positive aura. And mm. I should, I think whenever people has initiative yep. or movement, it has to be like that. You have to be able to engage with mm -hmm. other people too. And hopefully, uh, Mas Andre, along with the Indonesia Bureau Foundation, will also have this dominant effect with everyone in Indonesia so that we can also save the coral reefs and the ecosystem right here in our nation.